Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and we have another rental team to feature today from one of you fine people. Again, a little reminder, if you do have a rental team you'd like to see featured on the channel, do drop it down in the comment section below, drop me a DM on somewhere like Twitter or Discord and uh, we'll get around to featuring it as soon as possible. So today's team is from Russia. Thakar uh, is their username or handle online. So Rochelle, thank you so much for providing us with the rental. I know you've put a couple of messages across already um, and we're just getting around to it now. But it is a Lunala team, very exciting. Obviously, there you can see the Lunala is the kind of restricted on the team. Uh, it's a heavy kind of trick room based team as well. So you've got trick room wide guard, uh, both great techs in this format and then the moon guys beam and then the meteor beam as well, which is quite a standard option on Lunala with that power herb, giving that special attack boost and being able to kind of check out big damage uh, turn one if you want and also with the ghost typing immune to fake out which is so prevalent in this format and then the rest of the team made up with the um, obvious common brawl partnership of Rillaboom and Incineroar and then we got Tapu Finney another terrain there and uh, nice support as well obviously providing that haze to uh, get around any setup sort of Pokemon like Zacian or Xerneas and then you got uh, Grimmsnarl with additional fake out support uh, light screen no reflect on this one opt-in for the Sucker Punch, I do like that option for things like Shadow Rider Calyrex. Uh, the Spirit Break's always very strong. And then you've got Stack Attack like kind of rounding the team off with that Body Press, Gyro Ball, Protect, and a second Trick Rumor. So here is the rental code. We'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do, friends. And then we'll finish up with the rental at the end. So hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section on Lunala. Have you been trying it out this format? And uh, if you have, how have you been getting on with it? Would love to hear. So without further ado, friends, we'll jump into game one of today's episode okay first up today we have a Kyogre Tornado Serena Ferrothorn Reggie Alecki and Incineroar pretty standard kind of Tornogre team here you've got the obvious things that you're going to see you're going to see the Tailwind from the Tornado setting up the Kyogre you've got the Queenly Majesty ability on the Serena blocking all that kind of support from our end like fake out any priority attacks and then you've got a good trick room check um, in the Ferrothorn from my opponent's side of the field. So setting up Trick Room for us is going to be a little bit difficult. Might be better off going with like a Grim Snarl lead. We can't be taunted either because of our dark type in there. And um, we can guarantee to get a light screen up, which is going to be quite helpful against some big special attackers on my opponent's side of the field. Uh, I think we'll go Rillaboom and then we'll probably lean more on our own Incineroar as well. It gives us a nice switch into my opponent's Incineroar if they start throwing out Snarls and things like that. Uh, as well as a way for us to have something extra against that Ferrothorn, which is going to be a little bit difficult to uh, to deal with. Every time I see Ferrothorn, every time I see Ferrothorn, it's always one of those Pokemon I think it is going to be difficult. You've got to keep it in the back of your mind that it's going to be a tough Pokemon to deal with, and it's probably going to be one of the, the last Pokemon that will be standing as well. Generally, always is. So we see Kyogre and we see Incineroar come up for my opponent. So, got a couple of options here where we can. Go for the Meteor Beam straight away into the Grimmsnarl. If we go for like Faker with Grimmsnarl into the Incineroar to kind of block an attack there this turn, it does mean that we'll probably lose um, our Grimmsnarl here to a Water Spout. I would imagine without the Light Screen, we'll be we'll be kind of in a bad spot. We could just go for that Meteor Beam here though, and then Fake out into the Kyogre. The issue with doing this is that the, the Incineroar is in a position now where it could potentially just switch out into um, straight into Serena and block a fake out onto the Kyogre, which would be pretty bad. So there's an argument here where we go for something like uh, the Meteor Beam anyway and then just a light screen. Um, because I feel like Serena probably does come in because Grimstone more likely to... Oh, we don't see... Okay, Lunala should get an attack off before the Grim Snarl's able, uh, the, the, the Incineroar's able to go for the Snarl. Not ideal, Grim Snarl just about hanging on, which is good. We do get this Meteor Beam, so we'll be plus one. But likely to see a big attack from the Incineroar here, potentially. Gotta hope that it's Snarl over anything like Throat Chop or Darkest Lariat. But we do manage to pick up the knockout here, which is quite good. So that removes one issue. Uh, you've got to be a bit careful sometimes. Like it depends how Incineroar has been trained as well. You know, there is a there is a slim chance if it's like 
really heavily boosted in special defense and it can can hang on which is not ideal now we could go for a, a wide guard here got to watch out for uh, like payback on the serena we could just go for a spirit break into the ogre and block the the water spout hopefully grim snarl uh hopefully it outspeeds serena i wouldn't count on it but you know i think out of all the targets you're probably looking at serena going into something like lunala here um not the grim snarl and there's the payback which is not ideal yeah yeah it does take us down but we do get a free spirit break off into this kyoga weaken it in a little bit more not really ideal um one little bit but it does open the door for us to bring something like really boom onto the field so we've got a nice way to deal with the yoga um obviously we can't go for fake out we can't go for grassy glide all things are not uh, in our best interest right now uh, or what we want to do um but i think pretty much we're probably better hmm. do we go for the hammer arm because it's so obvious that the kyoga probably just switches out here where we could just double up into the serena you know and just go spirit break as well and u-turn because really boom's going to hit after the kyoga so they're going to get the water spout off regardless and they do switch it out so we kind of make that play right it just depends where the um the serena is going to hit into okay we do get the u-turn which is nice chunk of damage we are going to get incineral back onto the field we can put a little bit of pressure onto the ferrothorn which is nice i mean if it is the body like iron defense variant it's going to be difficult to kind of break down for sure really difficult but you might see um a triple axle here yeah into the incineral slot which does give us that free spirit break into the serena which is which is useful they only hit one time um it's just not enough it's just not enough not enough um gotta watch out for high jump kick as well but they are minus one i guess so here we probably want to switch back into. Uh, we can't leave the Ferrothorn alone. That's the big thing. We need to flare blitz it, I think. But if they body press as well, that's not really ideal. Where we could potentially parting shot out onto. Mm, I think we need to get a flare blitz off into it. And we could switch Grim Snarl into boom boom but yeah I think they could potentially switch Serena out to Olga here but I don't know yeah, yeah they're going straight back into Kyoga okay well, that's it's not terrible unless the U-turn here with Serena at least we're not taking a bunch of recoil damage high jump kicks obviously something that we need to watch out for but there is a risk that they miss you know but they just U-turn into the boom. Okay. And they're going to get... I think the rain's going to stop here, though. That's the big thing for my opponent, you know? The rain's stopping. But the Ferrothorn's in an awkward spot where they have to switch potentially back to Serena to block the Grassy Glide and the Fake Out. Does the rain stop? now there's one more turn of rain so i think here we have to this is the awkward thing here where you know i think they do it do they attack or do we be ballsy and just call the flare blitz into because basically to protect your kyoga you're going to have to switch in serena but even then if you do switch in the serena for it you're still going to lose your kyoga um but if we leave incineral on the field now it's our only way to deal with Ferrothorn. So if Incineral goes down, that's that's really bad. So I'd kind of be more inclined to just go Woodhammer into the Ogre slot and switch into Grimmsnarl and potentially catch the Serena switch coming back in. Yeah, okay. And they may go for something like Ice Beam 
But I'd say they probably want to get rid of, yeah, they want to get rid of this Incineroar here. But this trade-off's way better for us because now we get Incineroar back onto the field and the rain is going to be stopping this next turn. I got it. I was a bit premature that last turn, but the rain will stop this turn. The grassy terrain. is going to last one more turn. So that's, that's all right. I think it lasts one more turn. But a U-turn will take down that Serena. So that's all right. And a Flare Blitz should take down the, the Ferrothorn. I mean, we can double up into the Ferrothorn if we're really worried about it. But the fact that we're getting an Intimidate onto the Serena as well makes it so much easier to deal with. Like the... Triple Axel is a little bit scary, of course, but it depends on the speed stat, and I'm pretty sure that Rillaboom does outspeed this arena anyway, so um, a U-turn will be enough to get it. And the battle was cancelled. Whoosh! We start off with a win against a pretty hard opponent, to be honest, because that team was pretty scary, but we managed to come out on top, managed it pretty well, lost to Lunala pretty carelessly, I think, early on, um, but... It worked out in the end with what we had left and it was just game management at that point Ketna sells into that position where um we had the incineral fresh against the uh the, the ferrothorn so very good game to my opponent and we'll jump into game two next up we got fabio playing a team of rillaboom grimmsnarl reggie alecki dragapult oh, uh, swampert and ho -Oh. Jumping in on the hot or there. Uh, restricted, we don't really see too much of in Series 10, but I do love seeing it right here. Now, things to, to watch out for with my opponent's team. You know, speed control, they're kind of relying on things like Reggie Alecki. Um, and that's... Uh, I mean, Icy Wind on the Swamper, and there's definitely the possibility of Wide Guard there. Got to watch out for Earth Power, Scald, uh, especially into a Stack Attacker. But I mean, something that Rillaboom has, really easy time against it. You just got to watch out for that Hot or in particular. Incineroar are going to be extremely important in this match as well. Kind of resists what Dragapult can do to us. Uh, new as things like Grimmsnarl, things like Rillaboom, and the Hot or with Intimidate again. Falls a little bit foul to the Swampert, so I have to be careful with it in those situations. Uh, but we could lead Lunala here as well. Got to watch out again for Sucker Punch on something like Grimmsnarl, which could be a little bit tricky um, to deal with. So I think we'll go Incineroar, Lunala, Rillaboom, and then in the back, do we bring Grimmsnarl? Grimmsnarl going to be good. Uh... I mean, we could go down a Trick Room route as well with stacks, because stacks in a Trick Room are going to be good against most things, uh, excluding the Swampert. But we do have Body Press, so we're not, like, totally walled by it. At least we've got an attacking outlet against it. But we kind of would preferably have something like Lunala or Rillaboom out in the face of the Swampert if it is on the field, you know? So let's see how we get on against this one. A very interesting team though, and it's nice to come across a whole all, especially um, Master Tier as well, you know? It's something that we don't see too often, but it's good to see players still having a bit of fun with their Pokemon. Now we do see the Rillaboom come out onto the field. Uh, we are gonna get the Intimidate off into it. The one thing you could potentially do is go down a Trick Room route straight away. We could fake out into the Aleki. Got to watch out for knockoff though from the the Rillaboom, which is the big kind of big kind of problem here. Um, let's just have a quick look at Lunala speed stat because I do worry that we might not be slow enough to uh, underspeed something like Rillaboom, and or probably probably not. You know, um, we could just fake out into Boom, ignore Reggie Aleki. Um, now, I, we could Trick Room as well, because they could go Electra Web. And even if not, then Incineroar is going to be slower than that Rillaboom the next turn. We do see the Fake Out. Electra Web? Come on. Bolt Switch? Not the worst. What's coming in? Got to worry about knockoff though on the Rillaboom. That's definitely something I suspect. And uh, because our ability is broken, it does make it a little bit more tricky for us. Okay. Can we get 
I mean, minus one, are they going to be, oh, they're probably going to be able to uh, knock out Lunala for sure with knockoff. Let's just have a quick look. Refresh what? If this is standard Rillaboom, then their speed stat, yeah, they should be. They should be. We should be slower than them. So a Meteor Beam into the hole or would be enough. Um, and really, we could just parting shot into the opposing Rillaboom as well, just to get it down to minus two, which might be enough. And that allows us then to get Stack Attacker onto the field as well, which would be able to kind of do a bit more. Okay, hole we're going to protect. Not ideal. And Grassy Glide coming out. Okay, so no knockoff. Because if you had knockoff, you go for it here. You would 100% go for it here. Unless you are suspecting that you're going to just get taken down. Um, we'll bring stacks. Do we bring stacks in? Yeah, I think we bring stacker in. Yeah. Because then we got to switch back into Incineroar if we want to get... Um, if you want to get the Intimidate back onto both these Pokemon, which might not be a bad idea. Obviously, the Meteor Beam is uh, null and void now. We're not going to be able to get this off into the hall or through the Protect. We do get the Special Attack Boost, which is really useful. Um, but, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get a clean attack off into that slot. So, I think we have to go... Well, we have to. We have to Moon Guys Beam here. And I think we just... Um, we are plus one defense because we've got that grassy Serene boost. I think we're probably better off going for a body press into the Rillaboom slot. Just to take advantage of that plus one defense. We are going to see the whole all switch out, but that's fine. Regilecki coming in. We'll be able to take that down unless it's sashed. This should do a nice chunk of damage to that Rillaboom. Now it hasn't went for grassy glide, so I'd worry here. Okay, it's just going U turn. That's fine. Um, and I wonder if we're going to see the whole all come back in on this. Really boom slot. But we should be able to pick up our first casualty of this match with Lunala now into the Regieleki. Does depend what comes in here. Suspect do they have the Incineral. Is that gonna come in? No, it is just the whole all coming back in now to avoid any potential rock slide damage. Damage. But this is alright. Because then Really Boom probably potentially gonna come back onto the field. Yeah, the Aleki is sashed. They're just stalling Trick Room, turns out. So we've got to keep an eye on the Trick Room because we've got a double Trick Roomers out here. So we can get into the position where we can double Trick Room to keep the Trick Room going and be the next turn uh, when we go for that. So we'll go for the whole, oh, we'll go Moon Guys Beam into that slot and we will go for a, yeah, we'll just Body Press again into the Regieleki because either Aleki stays in and protects or we see Aleki just get let go so really boom comes in the next turn with the, the, the fake out which kind of hinders our ability to go for um, the double protect okay they double protect here kind of set the trick room up double double trick room there well um Now we're not going to be able to double trick room here, I don't think. That's that's the big that's the big thing. Um, so I think we got Mungus Beam. They have to switch in Aleki. They have to, really. We have to go for the body press though here because we can't let the, the Aleki get an attack off. And they withdraw Hall, which seems like they're pinned and they're panicking at this point. So the the boom's going to go down. The Reggie Aleki's going to go down. But then we've just got the switch from Stacker into Incineroar if we want, or vice versa, Lunala into Incineroar. And then we get the Trick Room up again with the fake out pressure that we've, we've got. And then it's kind of game, really. But it'll be interesting to see what my opponent's last Pokemon is. If it is the Swampert, we've got to kind of prioritize getting rid of that maybe before we, we start thinking about something like the Hot Orc. So the dimension sent back to normal. Grassy terrains left the field. Stack has plus two defense, so our body presses are doing a good, a good amount of damage. 
And it's Dragapult. Okay. Hmm. I think what we'll do is we'll just pull up the switch. Is this our last? No, the trick room has ended, hasn't it? It has just ended, yeah. Yeah, so what we'll do, pull in Incineroar. We'll trick room with Stacker. And then Stacker is probably the best thing to kind of go down. Really in this situation. Because then it opens it up for Lunala to come back in. Then we deal with the Dragapult pretty easily. Um, and then the whole, uh Lunala can deal with. I mean, the thing is, with like once you intimidate a or it becomes way less effective. We are going to see the, the Phantom Force, which is fine. It will dodge a turn next turn. Sacred Fire into stacks, but doing actually nothing. <laughs> so we get the Trick Room set up. So probably see the or potentially protect this next turn, I think. Um... Well, we could potentially just parting shot out onto... Actually, we could pull a hard switch out. Mm, no, 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 no. I think we have to fake out. We have to just fake out, I think. Because, yeah, the Dragapult's going to Phantom Force into the Incineroar slot, for sure. Uh, and we'll just body press into Hot Arm. But it's going to protect. It's going to protect, no doubt about it. Oh, I am wrong. I am so wrong. They are not protecting. But we have no Rock Slide, so, you know... We still do a fair chunk of damage though, don't we? we drag up a Phantom Force into Incineroar. Uh, doing a decent amount, but not anything to really be too concerned about. Because we can just double up into the Hot or this next turn. Uh, they could just Protect again though. Like, they could pull the Protect this turn. But I think the Dragapult alone is not going to be able to take down Stack Attack or Incineroar. So we should be able to kind of clean up from this stage of the match. Uh, as a throw chop should be enough to take down the hot or as we don't see a berry either which uh, would have been the one thing that may have given us a few uh, issues but um, there's another phantom force it's going to go into the stacker this time I'd imagine but I mean we don't even need to risk switching at this point the dragapult's not doing anything to whatever we got on the field um, and yeah let's not lock in the body press let's go for the gyro ball so the next turn it's nice and easy um, and then we can well, we'll see where, where the Dragapult goes into the stacks. Yeah, trying to get a bit of damage there, but just not going to be able to kind of get the damage they need, unfortunately, as we can lock this one up. We may see the forfeit here, but if not, I'd be happy. It'd be nice to see a match played out. Always like to, but we'll see. Is my opponent going to let us do it? Oh! Get the salt out. Get the salt out. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't really know. Pretty obvious. Pretty obvious what happened. We don't need to go into too many details, do we? Pretty obvious at that point. Never mind. Uh, Fabio, wherever you are in the world, I hope that was your connection. Not anything. Not No rash decision made there. Anyway, good game. Whatever happened at the end there. I think we we, we all rushed the shirt that we picked up the victory there. Um, in that one um, but yeah the team performed extremely well so what we'll do now friends is head over and remind you all of today's rental code right friends here is today's rental code a big shout out once again to Russia for the team providing that and like I've said earlier on in this episode if you do have a rental code of your own you'd like to see featured on the channel drop it down in the comment section or drop me a DM either Twitter or Discord is probably the best place to send them over but thank you so much Rochelle had a lot of fun with the team it is really fun to play around with um, and we got to see most things on the team today the, the Lunala is incredibly good especially in Shrek Room we've seen how good it is in previous formats with that stack attacker and then you got all the support options around it it really is a centralized team around those two Pokemon um, but that's not to say that the other Pokemon don't provide and do a good job themselves you know the Rillaboom the Incineroar the Grimmsnarl all can do their, their own role in their own right so uh, if you do try the team out I hope you have a lot of fun with it but we're going to wrap things up there friends we'll be back later in the week with more VGC series 10 content and um, until then take care of yourselves have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in the next episode so until then take care and bye bye